Now, this is a typical question where we've got to work backwards in the normal distribution. Just to recap, we've got the weight x grams of soup put in a tin by machine A is normally distributed with a mean of 160 grams and a standard deviation of 5 grams. And a tin is selected at random. Now the weight stated on the tin is W grams and what we've got to do is find the value of W such that the probability that X is less than W is equal to 0.01. So if you want to have a go at this then just pause the video, come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay welcome back if you did have a go. So first of all what I'd want to do is draw two sketches of normal distributions. One is the one that we're given, the fact that X is distributed normally with a mean of 160 and a variance of 25. That's the standard deviation squared. So I'm just going to write 5 squared here. It's up to you though whether you write 25. And we've got the mean of 160. And here below it I've drawn the standardized distribution Z with a mean of 0 and remember it's got a standard deviation of 1 or variance of 1. Now we want to place this value of W somewhere on our scale here. Well clearly it's got to be to the left of the 160 because the probability of being less than it is 0.01. So I know that the probability of being less than 160, this area here, is 0.5. So clearly W's got to be on the left of the 160. So let's just mark that in as that value there. There's W. Now what I'd want to do is drop a, say, line, dotted line maybe, it's up to you, straight down onto our standardized distribution. So this is, say, our observed value Z that corresponds to W. Let's call it Z1. Now, I should know that Z1 is always equal to the observed value from this distribution, which in this case is W, minus the mean 160 all divided by the standard deviation and the standard deviation is 5 remember this is the variance 5 squared so the standard deviation is 5. Now I can work out W only if I know what Z1 is. Well we can work out what Z1 is by looking up in tables. Now I know that at the moment this area here, which is the same as this area here, represents the probability of X being less than W. And we know that that value is 0.01. So when I want to work out what Z1 is, there's two ways I can do it. First of all, I'd want to check out what we call the inverse normal tables. Tables I was using gave you the probability, P, of being more than a given value of Z. Now we've got a value Z1 here which is on the left hand side of 0, not on the right hand side. But we can work off the symmetry properties of the curve. If we take this area here, which we know is 0.01, that's that area, okay, but reflect it over the other side, then we're looking at a value of P here, which is 0.01. In the tables I was looking up, it said 0.01, 0.0. Same thing though, okay? The Z value that corresponds with that was 2.3263. So I would know that this value is 2.3263. But we're looking up Z1 which is on the opposite side. So it's going to be a negative value. It's going to be the negative of this value. So what I would write here is that from tables, okay, remember I looked up in the inverse normal distribution tables. I'll show you how to do it another way in a moment. But 
z1 would equal the negative of this value, minus 2.3263. What it's saying is that this value w is effectively minus 2.3263 standard deviations below the mean. That's what a z value tells us. Okay, so how else could I have got this value? Well, I could have got it through using the other sets of tables, just the normal tables, where they gave probabilities being less than a given value of z. Now, if we're working from these tables, I know that if I was to mirror this to the other side, okay, this value here, this area, would be 0 0.01 but the area then to the left of it would be 0 0.99. Okay, so if this area, this white patch here, was had an area of 0 0.01, this blue area would be 0 0.99 in area. The probability then of z being less than z, little z, would be 0 0.99. And in my tables, I found these two values. Not exactly 0 0.99, but pretty close to it. And I'd want to take the one that was closest to 0.99, so I'd take this z value would be 2.32. But I've got to remember that it really should be on the other side here. By symmetry, it would then be the negative of this, minus 2.32. And you can see how it compares with what we've got up here. So, it's up to you. You get a slightly more accurate result if you use this value. If I was using these tables, my Z1 value would be minus 2.32. OK, so where do we go from here? Well, we can just work with this equation. We know that Z1, this value here, we can say therefore minus 2.3263. My Z1 value is equal to W minus 160, all divided by 5. And all I've got to do is rearrange this, times both sides by 5, and add 160 to get W. And if I do that, then we just get W equals 160 minus 5 multiplied by 2.3263. And if you work this out, what you find you get is 148 0.3685. And suppose you give it to, say, one decimal place, the answer would be 148.421 decimal place, 1 dp. Okay, so I hope that's uh, given you an idea then how we can go about that particular question, how you can look it up in either the inverse normal distribution tables or directly from the normal distribution tables. Right, well that brings us now to the end of this particular part of the question.